In the end of 1949, some men were out fishing and needed somewhere to sleep. They knocked on a family's door and soon realized that the door was unlocked, so they stepped inside and found the whole family slaughtered. Except for one of the family members, Juhani Atamin Poika, who was nowhere to be found. Twelve murders later, the person who is today believed to be the worst serial killer in Finnish history was finally caught. This is the case of the executioner Juhani Atamin Poika. <laughs> channel. My name is Elin and on this channel I cover true crime cases that have occurred in the Nordic countries. The only content warnings for this video are suicide and abuse even towards children, so if that's something that you don't want to watch then click out of this video right now and hopefully I will see you in my next case. This case is once again about a Finnish serial killer and buckle up because we have a lot of things to cover in this video. With that being said, now let's get into the case that happened in Finland. So Juhani Atamin Poika was born Johan Adamson on the 31st of July 1826 in Vesivehma, Finland. He was for a while the only child in the family and he grew up with his dad and his mom on the countryside. They lived as a pretty normal family. Johani's father Adam was working and his mother Eva was a maid. Eva had also, before getting married, worked as some kind of prostitute, whatever that was like during this time. At some point during Johannes' childhood, his father got tired of his job and became a soldier instead. Because of the situation in the country during that time, Adam moved to Helsinki and basically after this the family never saw him again. And divorce was super rare during this time as it was a complicated process, so basically Johannes' parents stayed married and never officially got divorced. Adam ended up disappearing and most people believe that he committed suicide by hanging himself. Eva was at this point in time 25 years old, so her and Johanny moved to her parents' place. Many people, especially neighbors, have blamed Johannes' grandparents for the person that he became because they spoiled him a bit and they did not really make him go to work. Eva continued working as a maid, but she was later charged with having a relationship outside of her marriage because that was illegal during this time. Even if her husband had disappeared and was believed to have killed himself, this was still a crime and as a sentence she had to confess publicly to what she had done. During this time, there was also no protection regarding pregnancy, so she soon realized that she was pregnant and she had to stop working as a maid, as this was super frowned upon. She eventually gave birth to Johannes little brother, but unfortunately he did not live very long and ended up dying. Eva had to go back to working as a maid, and one day on her way to work she met a 20-year-older man called Alexander Boom. They fell in love and ended up getting married in 1836, so they soon moved into a croft on the countryside. For some reason, Johanny stayed living with his grandparents until his mother Eva was steady enough to take care of him. Alexander had many children of his own, but only the youngest one called Johannes moved into the croft with them. Eva and Alexander also eventually had a mutual child together, a baby girl called Wilhelmina. So as a 10-year-old, Juhani moved into the household and they were then a family of five. So Juhani, his mother Eva, his stepfather Alexander, Alexander's son Johannes and Juhani's baby sister Wilhelmina. The family had a little bit better situation than when Juhani and Eva were living with her parents, but they were not rich and were sometimes tight on food. Johanny also did not get any type of education, even if there was a school where children could get Christian education, and it's really unclear why they didn't send him to school. But because he never went to school, he was never able to learn to read or how to write. On top of that, Johanny's stepfather was super tough and would sometimes beat Johanny when there was an argument between the two of them. Even if Johanny had a good relationship with his mom and the others in the family, he had had enough of his stepfather and ended up leaving the home as a 15-year-old. And he actually ended up not going back for years because they ended on such bad terms. As a teenager, Johanny was living a nomadic life and was committing some smaller crimes. When he was 16, he got a job and at first it went well, but that was it and working ended up being something that he did not really want to do. In 1847, he was 21 years old and got caught for robbing a very expensive horse. 
He confessed to his crime in court and was sentenced to pay damages as well as 37 whiplashes to his back and 336 days in prison. He served his sentence in Hamen Linna prison and was then free in summer of 1848 when he was put to work as a farmhand in his home area. Around a year later, his crimes continued as he broke into a house using a knife, packed some stuff with him and also left on a horse that he stole from the house. He was caught soon after and sentenced for this. But in October of 1849, when he was about to be taken back to prison, he actually escaped and started following a crime gang called Kilk and Clawney that he would soon also join himself. They had plans to rob a croft and he joined in on this robbery and ended up being the one who knocked the door to the house. When the couple opened the door, he said that he was not from the area and he was looking for his missing horse. The over 50-year-old couple who were living there let him inside and also invited him to stay the night because they really believed his story since he was holding horse equipment in his hands. When the couple fell asleep at night, he let the other criminals inside of the house and they just handed him a big axe. This axe Johanny used to hit the man of the house in the head with and then grabbed the sickle that they used on the couple until they fell to the ground. The woman still showed signs of breathing, so Johanny just pushed a blade into her chest. The group then searched the house for all valuable things, but they were disappointed as they did not find as much as they had hoped for. After a while, their neighbors started wondering why there was no smoke coming from the couple's pipe in many days. So he went to check the situation and ended up breaking in since he got no answer at the door. Inside he found a horrific scene as the elderly couple were laying dead in a pool of their own dried up blood. The murder weapons had been left at the scene and a doctor also came to the scene and concluded that the bodies had been dead for many days. It was soon clear that it had been a robbery and that the crime gang Kilk and Clawney were most likely responsible for this raw and horrible murder. But this was a super violent time in Finland and the police did not really know how to handle crimes like this and especially crime gangs were super hard for them to catch. A couple of weeks after he escaped on his way to prison, Johanny went back to his hometown that he had not visited for many years. When he arrived at his home, his mother and siblings were happy, but his stepfather did not react in a way that he had hoped. On the 12th of October, Johanny was going to work outside with his stepfather when he saw that his stepfather was wearing his father's clothes that he himself would have wanted to bring with him when he left home. Johanny made it clear that he did not like this and Alexander had answered, take them away if it bothers you and this made Johanny fly into a rage. So he attacked his stepfather and ended up strangling him to death. He then went back into the house where his mother was cooking dinner and he was just thinking about the fact that she would find out about what he had done and tell others about it. So even if his mother had only loved him throughout his life and she was very dear to him, he ended up killing her with a wood block. He then went to look for his sister Wilhelmina, who was caring for animals somewhere outside. But she saw blood on his face when he came towards her and she started running away from him. Johanny caught up to her and killed her with a rock before walking back towards the house. On his way there, he spot his 15-year-old brother Johannes, who was on his way to take some leather for handling. He actually ended up speaking with him for a while before murdering him with a big branch that he picked up from the ground. Johanny covered his brother with some branches and leaves in the forest and then went back into the house, cleaned up after himself, took his belongings and continued his journey. The same night, three people were out fishing and it was a super cold fall evening, so they decided to ask their acquaintances, Eva and Alexander, if they could stay there for the night, but when they knocked the door, no one answered. They realized that the door was unlocked and stepped inside where they saw Eva laying dead on the floor. It was evening and already dark, but the next day they found Alexander and Johannes' sister Wilhelmina's bodies in the field outside. Ten days later, Johannes' body was found buried by some branches and leaves in the forest. An investigation was started and pretty soon it was clear that Eva's son Johanny had to be responsible for the horrible act. Neighbors had stated that Johanny had spent a couple of days with the family before the murders and because this was such a horrible crime, they soon connected this with the elderly couple that had been found in a similar way. So Johanny, of course, had to stay as far away as possible and one night he came across a man who was traveling from Saima Canal, which is a transportation canal that connects Lake Saima with the Gulf of Finland near Russia. 
At Saima Canal, there were many job opportunities, but you needed a certificate to work there that this man happened to have. Yuhani, of course, realized that he wanted this certificate and ended up asking the man straight up if he could get it. The man, of course, answered no. I mean, he needed it himself. And what did Yuhani do? He decided to suffocate the man to death and stole the certificate before continuing his journey towards Saima Canal. When he arrived there, he was supposed to start working already the following day under the name Heiki Heiki Poika, and no one knew that he had killed a man to get this job. But he ended up not showing up to his work duties, as he had realized that a murderer would probably not be able to hide there for very long, and he also just did not like working that much. So he just continued his journey, and the work certificate that he literally killed someone for ended up being for nothing. When he arrived at his next destination, he went into a church and just sat there for a while. He then went to buy some alcohol and in this store he came across a man called Wilhelm who for some reason had showed him his work certificate. Johanne again asked him to give him these papers since the old certificate was still in Saima Canal and this man of course said no, you can't have it. So Johanne decided to murder Wilhelm in the forest and he stole the stuff that he needed but when he was about to leave he heard some sounds coming from his body. He then turned around and hit him so hard that Wilhelm lost his life and he then just continued his journey like nothing happened. At this point, Johanny had already killed eight people and he became well known in the area, so the police were of course looking for him. Wilhelm's body was found about a week after his death and at this point Johanny had already traveled far away from the scene. Traveling by foot was too hard for Johanny, so he decided to rob a horse to travel to a city called Lovisa. On the way there, with his horse and wagon, he crashed into another man's wagon. This man was called Johan, and he got angry because of the crash and screamed at Johanny. Of course, Johanny could not handle this and got so angry that he hit him in the head with a pole from the ground. Johan didn't even have time to react and fell to the ground. Johanny continued hitting Johan until he made sure that he was dead and he then continued his journey to the Kölkenklani community. About a week later, some kids found Johan's body in the place where Johanny had left him. In November, Johanny met a woman called Hedda through the Kölken Klani group members. Hedda was born in 1824 to a single mother and lived with her until she was 15 years old. She was working in a woman prison, but not because she wanted this, but instead she had been put to work in a working prison. Johanny and Hedda fell super hard for each other and Johanny proposed to her with a stolen wedding ring. And can I just say how romantic? The next step for the group was to rob another croft and they had again planned it so that Johanny went to knock the door and ask for a place to sleep and would then again let in the other group members at night when the family would be sleeping. Things went according to plan and when the father of the house woke up during this invasion, Johanny grabbed some firewood from the floor and hit him in the head. The man of course tried to fight back but ended up falling to the ground and Johanny then grabbed an axe that he started hitting him with. Once the man was unresponsive, he attacked the woman of the house in the same way with the axe and the couple ended up dying from this brutal attack. When they left, they thought that it would not be good for someone to find the bloody crime scene, so they set the house on fire. But of course the fire got even more attention and they almost got caught because of it. The next day the investigation started and it showed that the couple had not been dead when the fire was started. Even if the bodies had been burned, you could see that they had been hit in the head with something that could obviously not have happened from the fire. But the Kölk and Klani group was also disappointed with this robbery since they had not found so much valuable stuff in the house, so their solution was of course another robbery. The next robbery was towards a croft in Hamenlinna where a family was living. The group knew that this family was well off and they had planned in advance how they would launch their attack. Except for the father, the family consisted of a mother, an old housewife and two small children, so there was not really any younger men living in the house. In November of 1849, Johanny and the group members Antti and Heiki went towards the croft ready to rob it and this time they had decided to just go straight in and attack the family. 
They got all the way to the door, but the members of the household did not really let them in since they knew about the robberies and violence that had been happening lately. So they ended up forcing themselves in by breaking the windows and started their attack. They actually didn't kill the family straight away, but they did use violence towards them to find out where they kept the valuable stuff and money. Unfortunately, the group even abused the children, and the youngest child was under one year old, so it was a little baby. The wife of the family, of course, did her everything to protect them, but what could she do against three men? In the end, the group decided that they could not let any witnesses live, and they also thought that they had killed the whole family. The wife actually held her breath and pretended to be dead while the others got very bad injuries and were unconscious from the attack, but miraculously they ended up surviving. The elderly housewife did however end up dying only a couple of weeks later from her injuries. And of course the whole family, especially the children, were left completely traumatized from this attack. Johanny, Antti and Heiki just continued their journey as usual as if nothing had happened. The next day, Kölk and Klani had a group meeting, and at this point, Johanny had been killing people for over five weeks without getting caught. Johanny started having a feeling that he would get caught, but still ended up staying in the area and apparently also walking pretty normally outside. One night, two local men had seen Johanny walking outside and started following behind him. They then just told him that now you will come with us and took him to the police station. Johanny had been completely calm and not done anything aggressive, just accepted the situation and went with them. But at some point he did start threatening the men and kind of tried to manipulate them into letting him go. But the men thankfully took him to the authorities no matter what he said and he was of course arrested. And these two men who were brave enough to take Johanny to the police station were kind of seen as heroes. So most of the investigation consisted of eyewitness statements, as the time was different from now and there was not the same type of methods used to conduct information. Johanny himself told the investigators openly about how he had killed his family and some of the stolen stuff were found in Johanny's possession. A doctor did a mental evaluation of Johanny and this showed that even if he was physically normal and had no disabilities, he had absolutely no morals or emotions, which is usually a big sign of a psychopath. But apparently a psychiatrist has stated that the reason for Johanny's behavior might lay in his facial features. He strongly believed that Johanny was suffering from syphilis that he had probably gotten from his mother already at birth. Being born with syphilis can apparently cause unpredictable, unrestrained and short-tempered behavior. And I of course had to look this up and found something called congenital syphilis that happens when a mother with untreated syphilis passes the infection to her baby during pregnancy or at birth. Symptoms might be, for example, Hutchinson's teeth, which is teeth that are smaller and more widely spaced than normal and which have notches on their biting surfaces. A person with congenital syphilis may develop skeletal deformities, including deformity of the nose, lower legs, forehead, collarbone, jaw, and cheekbone. Frontal bossing is common for people suffering from this, but also a saddle nose or swollen knees. And I will of course insert the picture of Johanny in this video, so you can make up your own opinion about this, but I do agree that he does have some of these features. And this diagnosis would fit into his mother having sexual relations with different men and possibly being some kind of prostitute. I do also want to mention that Johanny was a victim of abuse and this could have of course affected him negatively and maybe taught him to solve his problems through aggressive behavior. Anyway, in the end Johanny confessed to 12 murders and he was sentenced to death. In the beginning of 1853, Johanny was led out to the public spot where he was going to be executed in front of the people in town. Johanny did not have any last words and the executioner put the axe into the air ready to hit Johanny's throat when he was suddenly stopped. Nikolai I, the Grand Duke of Finland, had softened the punishment to 40 whiplashes and a life sentence. 26-year-old Johanny was instead taken to Suomenlinna where he was kept as a prisoner under very inhumane circumstances until his death in August of 1854. Basically during his prison time he was kept as a circus animal because it was a public place where people could come and watch him. He was kind of kept as an example of what happens to the worst criminals to scare people away from committing similar crimes. 
After his death, he did not get to rest in peace as his body amongst the other prisoner corpses were used for surgeries within the university hospital. So I guess that something good came out of Johannes' time on this planet after all. But that's all that I have for this case today and before I go I just want to say that this case was super hard to research as there is very limited information on the internet about the case. So even if I try to get as accurate information as possible I can't be 100% sure that it's correct. I just wanted to mention this and this goes for all of my videos. I just can't be sure that the information that I find is correct. But I still hope that you enjoyed this video. This case was a bit older, but it was a case that someone actually requested in the comments and it ended up being a super interesting case. But with that being said, thank you so much for watching today and have a great rest of your day. Goodbye everyone.